right, you guys, we're going to be talking about Chapter 29, uh, Latin America. On this side, we see the beginning of Section 1, the trends, general trends in Latin America. During the Great Depression, Latin American leaders encouraged the development of local industries. The policy failed to end Latin Americans' dependence on the advanced, uh, inv advanced industrial nations, largely because the new industries had to import most of their supplies and equipment and failed to find markets for their goods. Economic problems led to political instability and dictatorships. The pressure of mounting foreign debt in the 1980s helped to end the dictatorships. Newly formed democracies had to face urban crowding, poverty, and international drug trade. The formation of the Organization of American States encouraged cooperation in the Western Hemisphere and called to an end to military action by one state in the affairs of another. However, the United States continued to intervene in Latin America. Latin American artists and writers have had a prominent role in society. Magic realism has been an important uh, literary contribution. While Latin American exported, sold raw materials, it imported, bought, manufactured goods from industrialized nations. Because of the Great Depression, Latin America started to produce its own goods. Often they relied upon American or European companies to manufacture goods in Latin America, so the companies were not run by Latin Americans. Number one problem facing the Latin, Ameri La La Latin America in recent history, the economy. The problems with the economy, the ability to make money and live at a certain level, were causing revolts. People were for forced to industrialize, become modern too quickly, and Latin America relied too heavily on foreign governments. Look at the map to the right, and you can see that one of the countries that has the large, or the produce that is um, the main export is coffee. Now look at these two pictures as I read below. <laughs> Population of Latin America. Economic problems were made worse by a large population growth. Too many people and not enough income. The gap between the rich and the poor became large. Cities could not keep up with the rapid growth. Overpopulation created slums, and it just led to a general terrible living conditions. If you look to the left, the land-owning wealthy, or urban city elite, lived well while the poor struggled for survival. So you can see the countries, the average national income per capita in the late 1960s, how terrible it was. Could you imagine below $200? And here you can see some of the summary questions in section one. Now let's look at our nearest neighbor to the south, Mexico, Cuba, and of course Central America. Political and economic crises in Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean sometimes resulted in revolution and other times brought foreign intervention or gradual political change. In Mexico, economic and political challenges gradually convinced the ruling party to let other parties compete for power. In 2000, Vincent Fox was elected president of Mexico, ending more than seven decades of PRI rule. Fidel Castro's communist government came to power in Cuba in 1959. The revolution, however, did start in 1953 and remained in control after the collapse of the Soviet Union, despite deteriorating economic conditions. His brother Raul replaced him in, 19, in 2008. Uh, they roll him out. They roll Fidel out every once in a while. He is not dead. He is kind of still in power. In El Salvador, the United States provide military aid to crush leftist guerrillas. In 1992, peace settlement ended the war after at least 75,000 people died. In the late 1970s, a Marxist Sandinistas overthrew the Somoza family dictatorship in Nicaragua. Nicaragua. After a civil war, with American-backed Contra rebels, Nicaragua held elections and the Sandistas were defeated. In Panama, ruler Manuel Noriega became involved in the drug trade. U.S. troops invaded the country in 1989 and jailed Noriega on drug trafficking charges. In Guatemala, the brutal civil war ended in 1966. Here you can see a picture of Mexico and all of the states that exist within Mexico. After the Mexican Revolution, which was a Mexican conflict within Mexico, kind of like a civil conflict, 
that country saw steady economic growth. In the 1960s, students' demonstrations led to the government reform. Initially, oil was owned by the government but had to be privatized, which means that we could buy it, in the 70s due to large government debt. Next, you see a slide of the Mexican flag. If you look below, the red, white, and green are colors of the National Liberation Army in Mexico. The, cen the central emblem is the Aztec pictogram for what is now for the city, which is now Mexico City, the center of their empire. It recalls the legend that inspired the Aztecs to settle on what was originally a lake island. The form of the coat of arms was most recently revised in 1968. A ribbon in the national colors at the bottom of the coat of arms. Throughout history, the flag has changed four times. As the design of the coat of arms and the length-width ratios of the flag have been modified. However, the coat of arms has had the same features throughout. An eagle holding a serpent in its talon is perched atop a prickly pear cactus. The cactus is situated on a rock that rises above a lake. The coat of arms is derived from the Aztec legend that their gods told them to build a city where they spot an eagle on a Nepal eating serpent, eating a serpent which is now Mexico City. The current national flag, the fourth national flag, is also used as the Mexican naval ensign by ships registered in Mexico. Now on to Cuba. Cuba, of course, is just 90 miles off the coast of Florida. The Cuban Revolution was an armed revolt conducted by Fidel Castro's 26, uh, 26th of July movement and its allies against the regime of Cuban dictator Fajincio Batista. The revolution began on July of 53. It finally ousted Batista in January of, 50, of 59, replacing his regime with Castro's revolutionary government. Castro's government later reformed uh, along communist lines, becoming the present Communist Party of Cuba in October of 65. Many Cubans disagreed with Castro and fled America. Most lost their wealth that they had in Cuba. In October of 1960, the U.S. declared the trade embargo on Cuba. All trade ended. So as you can see to the left, if I try to get a flight from Las Vegas to C Cuba, it will not allow me to do that. And here this slide summarizes the rest of issues within Central America. But if you look, you can see El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Panama. Of course, the other countries are actually found in South America. And the next slide is the summary questions from Section 2. Section 3. Many countries in South America alternated between elected government and military rule during the second half of the 20th century. Now into the 21st century, these countries are largely democratic. In the 1970s, Chile's Marxist president Salvador was killed by military forces led by Augusto, Augusto Pinochet, who set up a dictatorship. Protests against human rights abusers under Pinochet eventually forced him to restore democracy, and he lost the 1989 election. Chile became a stable democracy with steady economic growth. Argentina's Juan Perón was a highly popular dictator in the 1950s. In, 19, uh, in 1983, democracy was restored to Argentina after the failed invasion of the Falkland Islands. Brazil's economic military in the 1960s led to high inflation. In the 1980s, democracy returned to Brazil. In 2002, Brazil elected Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, its first left-wing president in four decades. Instability and peasant unrest in Peru brought return to dictatorship under the elected, elected leader Alberto Fujimora. His ouster in 2000 restored democracy. Colombia's democracy is very old but has been racked with problems and has often involved harsh repression. Lawless drug cartels have been a continual problem. A series of military dictators ruled Venezuela during the first half of the 20th century. Hugo Chavez 
uh, led a failed coup against the government in 92. He ran for president and won in 98. He has most recently died. He is known for being a communist. Here are some statistics on South America. You can see that the major European languages spoken are Spanish, Portuguese, English, French, and Netherlands. Then you can look to the right and see where South America is located, some of the statistics, and below some of the flags, the area, the population. You can see which country has the largest population, which of course would be uh, Brazil. And you can see in Brazil they speak Portuguese, they don't speak Spanish. On the next slide, we see four of the countries highlighted, Brazil, Chile, and Peru, Peru and Colombia. In Brazil, the military controlled Brazil from the end of World War II until 1985. Once the democratic government was in power, it faced enormous issues of debt, inflation, and a lack of social unity. Slowly, Brazil recovered. You can see Augusto Pinochet and one of the stories about uh, people disappearing, the torture and murder during his rule is Marta. In uh, a 29-year-old model was arrested, this is in 1975, uh, in Santiago by the secret police. According to a prisoner's report smuggled out of the women's prison when Marta was last seen inside a detention center, Christmas Eve 1974. Her nose was broken and she had welts all over her body. She had been subjected to electric shocks and to sexual abuse. You can research more of what was happening in Chile on the internet. Peru had a history of instability. The communist guerrilla group called Shining Path killed mayors, missionaries, priests, and peasants with the goal of creating a classless society. In 1990, the son of Japanese in immigrants, Alberto Fujimura, uh, was brought to power. Sadly, he suspended the Constitution and Congress and became a dictator. Finally, in 2001, a freely elected pr a president was elected. And in Colombia, Marxist guerrilla groups began to organize peasants. The government responded by killing 200,000 peasants. Since the peasants were poor, they turned to a cash crop called cocoa. The leaves are used to make cocaine. Cash crops are things you can't eat, remember? Can't eat this, but you can make a lot of money off of it. Drug lords created cartels or groups of drug businesses that used bribes and violence to force government, government cooperation in drug trafficking. Colombia supplies the majority of cocaine uh, to the world. And here is the slide that uh, shows you different questions as a summary for Section 3. Here is a slide that shows you a summary of Cuba, Nicaragua, Mexico, Argentina, and El Salvador. You can see conflict, revolution, change, and cooperation. This is some of the highlights of the entire chapter.